Hello and welcome to another episode of 3Max. This is a channel dedicated to helping users who are new to Emacs to get started using Emacs effectively. Before we get started, I'd like to mention that if you are enjoying the content, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe. So if you're feeling so kind, please hit that thumbs up and the subscribe button. Okay, with that out of the way, today's video is gonna be about the .emacs file. I'm gonna share what it is, why you might want to use one, how does the file get loaded and what does that mean? And lastly, we'll look into how to make one of the files and, and where to place it. So you might have come across the term .emacs or you might have seen it in different forums or different websites and maybe you're wondering what that is. If you're anything like me, you're confused and you might have thought, what is this .emacs thing? I haven't heard of that, I don't know what it is and what it's useful for. So the .emacs file is a very common location to place your Emacs initialization file. And the Emacs initialization file is an Emacs Lisp program that gets run whenever you start Emacs. A very common use case for this file is to load up new variables, uh, to set variables, which may configure how Emacs behaves. As an example that we'll get into later, you might want to set how wide do tabs look on your, uh, on your editor. Another example is that you can define custom functions that uh, will run and, and do whatever you like. Uh, another very common one is to set custom keyboard shortcuts. Um, but yeah, all of these are examples of how you might configure Emacs to be more useful to you. Okay, so let's start out with a concrete example of a file that's got a lot of tabs in it, this tabby.go file. So what I've got here is essentially just three for loops iterating over some integer ranges and then printing out some function of those integers. Now, arguably having so many nested for loops is, you know, not great. But in reality, I feel like three or four levels of indentation is not uncommon these days. And if we look at this, in my opinion, it's it's very hard to read. The spaces are, are very wide. Um, and this is a tab character here, as is customary for Go files. Now the issue here is not that we're using tabs. The issue here is how many spaces does Emacs use for the tabs? And in this case, it looks like, you know, maybe something like eight here, which in my opinion is just much too many. So let's see if we can fix that by using our favorite .emacs file. So we're gonna open up a new file in the home directory called .emacs. And this file is empty and we're gonna add some code to it. And I'll copy it in here. And I don't want to go into too much of how Elisp works, but you can imagine that this set Q default sets a variable that we call tab width and sets it to two. Now this is a variable that is used to determine how many spaces the tab character shows. And we can even see at the bottom here, distance between tab stops for display of tab character in columns. So I like to set mine to two, which is pretty, uh, pretty mild. And now uh, we restart Emacs and we see that it's the same tab character, but now it only takes up two spaces on the screen. In my opinion, this is much more readable. And I like to add that to my .emacs file. Now you might also be wondering where on earth should I place my .emacs file and how does Emacs know where to find it? And that's a great question. I'll share a link with more details about how this process works, but there are a few different files that it looks for in a few different locations. But the one of the most important parts of this is your home directory. So if you're not familiar with that, I'm in my home directory right now, but you can echo this variable uh, with the echo dollar sign home, and it should show you your home directory here. So that's my current directory. If I type CWD for current working directory, um, sorry, PWD for present working directory, we see that I'm in home Tmax and that's the same as this dollar home. 
So Emacs is going to look in this home directory for a file with .emacs. And that dot is also very important. If you just call it an Emacs file, that's not going to work. It has to be .emacs. OK, so by now you should have an understanding of what a .emacs file is, how you can use it to customize Emacs to your liking, and where to place it in your file system so that Emacs can find it. If anything is unclear, or if you have any suggestions for content that you'd like to see, please leave a comment down below, and thanks for watching.